joining in. Um, but anyway, I wanted to say thank you guys for joining. Um, I will just introduce myself again. So I'm a speech language pathologist. Um, I've been a speech language pathologist for over six and a half years now. I work with um, the pediatric population. Um, and I have my own private practice um, here in California, specifically um, in Los Angeles. But because of COVID, um, I am only doing teletherapy. Nice. I see you're from New York City. You have a 15 month old baby boy. 1102. Well, I appreciate you joining in. I hope um, your baby boy is sleeping well right now while you're able to attend this. Um, but yeah, so I'm um, SLP. Um, I, like I said, I'm providing virtual ther teletherapy right now just because you know, COVID is around. So I'm not doing any in homes, which is something I typically do. Um, so everything is online. Um, I've been doing that for about six and a half years now. And I've only worked with the pediatric population. My passion has always been with children. Um, and before I was an SLP, I actually uh, worked as a behavioral therapist. So um, I had a lot of um, clients that were on the autism spectrum or clients with Down syndrome. So that's kind of how I got into um, this field of um, speech pathology. All right, let me just make sure people are still signing on. Remember, make, make sure to say hi so I know you're on here and let me know where you're from. Uh, let me know what state you're in. Um, and I'm excited to have you guys all joining in on my um, live event. All right, so yeah, so I'll just continue to keep talking uh, for a few more minutes until I know um, people have settled in. I know, you know, some of you guys have children and you're still making sure that they're uh, getting ready for bed. So totally understandable. Oh, hi, Elizabeth. Hi, uh, thanks for joining. Um, yeah, so all you people coming in, I just wanted to say my name is Grace. Um, I'm a speech therapist. Um, I'm located in California. Um, and, you know, due to COVID, um, everything that I'm doing is virtual versus um, in-person sessions for speech therapy, uh, evaluations, or feeding therapy. So everything is online. I'm sure you guys, a lot of you are familiar with Zoom. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure a lot of uh, your kids, your older kids are probably using Zoom for their um, school sessions as well. Um, so just make sure to drop a comment, say hi, let me know where you're from. Oh, hi, Morgan. I see you're from Alabama. Hi, Eduardo from Mexico. 20 months old, twin boy, twin girl and boy. That's nice. Oh, hi, Olivia. You're from California. Nice. Nice to see a fellow Californian here. So it seems that a lot of you guys have a lot of um, young toddlers, which is actually a majority of the kids I work with. Um, most of the kids I see are three years old and under. Um, my youngest uh, one that I've seen is probably, in my experience, is probably 14, 15 months old, which is very rare. Most of the kids I see, um, the youngest would be like 17 months old. Hi, hi, Giselle. I see you're from California too. Hi, Evelyn from Georgia. Oh, you have a little one. Nice, you have a six month old boy. Great, Um, yeah, so, okay. So I will be starting um, my topic now, uh, now that I think most of you guys have joined in. Um, so for today's topic, as you saw in the event, I'll be talking about four speech strategies that parents should know. Um, and after that, I'll be taking questions from um, all of you guys, if you guys have any questions regarding um, any speech related um, things. So one of the first um, speech strategies that I do like to um, do with my clients is modeling words or phrases. So, and I will show you also with a book. So one thing you can do, for example, when you're modeling a word or phrase, this is better than asking a question. So oftentimes, you know, I have parents and which is fine to ask questions too. You know, I sometimes I forget to ask questions, not to ask questions, but um, a very common strategy is to model a word. So instead of saying, for example, I'll show you with this book. 
instead of asking your child, what is it? What animal? What do you see? You can just model and say, elephant. So you can be really silly and make it fun. Um, instead of asking questions, you know, oftentimes asking questions does increase that pressure for your child. Um, if you think about it, it's like, you know, as an adult or, you know, when you're an older child in class, it's like when a teacher asks you a question, you kind of feel that pressure. So that's why I like using that analogy when working with little kids. So instead of asking questions like, what is it? What color? What, color? what are you doing? Um, you can model the word instead. So another example you can do, um, instead of saying, what is it? You can say, oh, lion, roar. And of course, you know, doing the sounds as well to model the sounds. Instead of asking what does the lion say, you can model the sound. Um, it also helps to place the object near your mouth if you want your child to imitate what it is you're trying to tell them. So let's, for example, say you want your child to tell you car. So instead of saying, what is it? Or, you know, what do you see? You can say, car that way they're seeing how you're producing the sound with your mouth and um at the same time they're also looking at your face versus just looking down because eye contact is um, very important um so that is another way and then if you do have um a little one let's say you have a baby um one thing that you can do too of course you know i'm not expecting the baby to imitate the sound or the word right away especially if you know they're a very um, little one one thing you can do is by um just narrating everything you're doing throughout the day just so that your baby gets exposed to different um vocabulary so let's pretend you know you're changing your baby's diaper you can just talk about what you're doing like oh i'm changing your diaper oh we're gonna wipe 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 so really just using a lot of language um throughout the day with your child and baby um even with your baby or child you can talk about your day like oh mommy's gonna make some food i'm gonna open the fridge or even you can talk about what they're doing. So let's say um, your baby is, you know, kicking their feet or doing some type of movement, um, just kind of narrating what it is that they're doing just so that they're also getting exposed to um, all those different words um, throughout the day. So um, that's something you can do with babies. And another thing you can do with your little one too, I know you guys have a lot of babies there, so I wanted to make sure um, I get to uh, what you can also do with your young one is um, imitating what your toddler or what your baby is doing. So for example, maybe your baby is um, babbling and saying, ba, 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 ba. You can also imitate them and say, ba, 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 ba. And you can make it be like a back and forth um, type of game because that back and forth exchange is very um, important for um, conversation skills. So like I was saying, if you're saying, if your baby goes ba, 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 you can also go ba, 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 and then see if your baby also imitates that again. So you do that back and forth exchange with the babbling. <clears throat> so that's another thing you can do with your baby. And if you have a toddler that is already um, producing some words, some single words, um, or even two word phrases, um, another thing you can do is to model by adding an extra word to it. So let's say, um, let's say your child says shoe. You can say, yeah, blue shoe. So usually one thing you do is you just add one word to your child's word. So if your child says one word, you add one word to it. If they say a two word phrase, then you can add um, one word to that two word phrase. So maybe your child is saying um, something like purple car, then you can say, oh, purple car fast. So just adding that one word to their, um, what, you know, to their word already helps to um, expand their word or their phrase. So that is my number one strategy for right um, that I'm talking about at the moment. And then my next one is um, to talk about choices. So my second strategy is choices. Um, so choices is a very um, great strategy that you can provide for your child because it gives them the opportunity um, to answer the question by when you give them a choice versus just asking them an open-ended question you know they may not be able to give you an answer so it helps when you give them those two choices so let's for example say um, maybe you guys are re getting ready to eat so one thing you can ask is something like, should we eat carrot or should we eat broccoli? That way they can tell you if they want the broccoli or carrot versus just asking, what do you want to eat? 
this at least gives them the two choices and it also makes it feel like they have some control uh, which you know of course children like to have a little bit control in is um being able to tell you what they want so to them they may think like oh you know mom or dad is letting me choose so it's great to give them choices and that could be with anything it doesn't just have to be with food um it could be with toys so maybe you can ask your child something like do you want to play with the car the purple truck or the train that way they can tell you train or they can tell you car so again you're giving them somewhat of a control but at the same time you get to choose what it is they get to choose from um, so that's why choices are um, and is another great strategy because it helps them feel like they're in control and it also decreases um, their question it decreases the pressure they may get may get when they have to answer the question on their own. So that is one way, another another strategy that you can do. And if your child is not yet able to tell you verbally what it is they want, then you know you can just even see if your child will reach for the object or toy they may want or food they want. Um, and then whenever they do reach or point to that particular object or food, then it helps to label what it is. So. So let's say maybe um, your child that is not yet talking, you're asking them, oh, should we play with car or train? And then you can see that they're trying to reach for the car. Then you can model car, you want the car. So it really helps to always um, model a word when they are gesturing. And that goes with similar to what I just mentioned in my first strategy of um, modeling the words. So this is when you would, um, model the word for them when they're reaching for something because they're not able to tell you the choice that they want yet. All right, and um, my third strategy, and I, I see that you guys do have some questions, um, so don't worry, I will get to them uh, after I'm done with this. I know um, Bracha actually sent me a lot of the questions you guys had already, so don't worry, we'll get to them. Um, so the third strategy that I do also like to do um, as we typically call it, it's called sabotage. Um, I know it sounds like a mean word to sabotage your child, but it's actually a really helpful strategy that I found effective with all of my speech clients. Um, so what I mean by sabotage is really just not anticipating or not um, giving your child everything that they need right away. Um, maybe forgetting a few things, to, forgetting to give them something, maybe you you lost something, you dropped something. So one example I can show you is um, let's say maybe your child wants to um, play with toy food. Um, so I, I'm talking about toy food a lot today just because that's a, a very popular um, toy that I like to use with my clients. Um, so let's say your child wants to cut, you know, cut the carrot. Um, instead of giving them both, the items that they need, you can just give them the knife. Here you go, here's a knife. But how are they going to cut if they don't have the food to cut, right? So that way when you just give them the knife or when you're sabotaging it, then they're able to request for what it is they want. Um, and I know that there was a sign language series um, previous to my um, live event. So that would be included. So when your child wants to request, you can, of course, have them request using sign language, using words um, when they do need help or if they want something because they don't have the items that they need. So that's one way you can do the sabotage. Um, another way that you can do um, a sabotage is, let's say, maybe your child wants um, a drink. Um, and just pretend this is empty. Let's say your child wants their bottle of milk or a cup of milk in there, and you you know you sense that that's what they want. So you can just give them an empty container, empty cup or empty container, and say, "Here's your milk," and then wait and see what they'll do. And then they, they you know they can either request um, you know drink, they might request help, they might request you know I want. So it really helps to sabotage just because it gives them more opportunities to um, request for what they want versus just giving them everything that they want already. Um, another example of sabotage would be, so let's pretend that you um, are playing with potato head. 
and your child wants to play potato head, you can just give them the potato head and not give them any of the pieces yet because that way they can request for the potato head piece that they want. So they can, if you see that they are, um, I'm just getting this from my box. So if you see that they are asking for um, a body part for their potato head, then that's when you can go back to that previous strategy of choices where you ask, oh, should we get the hat or the arm? That way, um, you know, they're able to request and um, it gives them more opportunity versus giving them all the body parts um, that, you know, they would use for the potato head. So that's my third strategy, which is sabotage. And I know this is a lot of information, but I will go oh, briefly go over um, these four strategies again at the very end. All right, so my last strategy that I like to do with a lot of my speech clients is um, to pause and wait. Um, and I know it's hard, you know, even for me, sometimes it's hard, you know, not to stay quiet. It, you know, I feel like oftentimes people have the need to fill in that blank or fill in that pause. Um, so just really try hard not to speak right away, let's say, or anticipate your child's needs right away. Um, so just waiting and pausing. So for example, um, let's go back to my car toy. So let's say you're playing cars with your child. One phrase that I like to do often is ready, set, go, um, or one, two, three. So for the ready, set, go with cars, you can go ready, set, and then wait. Some one, um, one strategy I tell parents is just, you know, as you're waiting, just pretend like you're counting your teeth because, it, you know, it makes time go by a little bit faster and, you know, your, your mouth is busy when you're trying to count your teeth as you're doing the ready, set, go, just because, and it, it makes you pause longer. So again, so you go ready, set, go. So that pause that you do when you do that ready, set, go um, is very useful because it gives your child the opportunity to communicate, whether it's through eye contact, um, through filling in that blank with the sound, um, filling in that blank with a gesture, um, or filling in that blank with the word go. So, for example, for the eye contact, let's pretend, you know, um, you're doing this with your little one. You go, ready, set. And then once they look at you, they make that eye contact, then you can let it go. Um, if they're past that eye contact phase, then you can go, ready, set. And then if you hear them do a sound like, uh, or uh, or, even though it's not exactly go, then you would let it go. Um, and then, of course, when they say go, then you can let it go. Um, and then another thing you can do would be, a gesture. Um, let's say your child um, is not yet verbal and able to produce the word or sound. You can wait, ready, set. And then you can see that they're kind of like, you know, moving around or moving their hand as if they want you to push the car. Then that would be your time to let the car go. And then you would go, go. Um, so that's another example of how you can use that phrase, ready, set, go with the pause and wait strategy. Um, and you can do this with any activity. So I do that a lot with cars, um, bubbles. So before you blow the bubbles, you can do the ready, set. And then once your child looks at you, then you can blow the bubbles. Um, and this also works with one, two, three. So you can go one, two, three, and then you let it go. So there's, you know, a lot of those different phrases that you can do the pause and wait strategy. Um, another example um, that you can do, so if you have um, a little one, so if you have a baby that's um, not yet speaking um, yet, just because they're, you know, so they're still a baby, um, one thing that you can use for this pause and wait strategy um, is doing the, this little piggy uh, with their toes, uh, which I can show you with <laughs> my puppet over here. So just pretend you don't see the shoe. Pretend that, you know, this is your baby's toe. So you're going, this little piggy went to the market. And this little piggy, you know, you do all the little piggies with their feet one time. And then you go back again and you do the first one. This little piggy goes to the market. And then the second one, you pause and say, this little piggy goes. And then just kind of see. So we're not expecting your baby to finish the phrase. And um, we want to see if your baby moves their feet or, you know, moves their hand or, or makes a sound or laughs because that's their way of showing you or indicating to you that they want more. Um, so whenever, let's say you're doing that and you see their toes wiggling, then you can 
finish um, the This Little Piggy um, story with their feet because when they're wiggling their toes, that's their way of showing you like, oh, I want more. And you can do that with other games too. Like if you do peekaboo with your baby or your toddler, um, see if uh, they react in a way by like looking at you, smiling, laughing when you're pausing, um, then that's their way of showing uh, that they want to do more of the peekaboo. And again, um, you can, of course, do the sign language um, too and show them if they want more, um, just uh, just for to help them um, request. All right, so that, those are my four strategies. Um, so now I'll be going over the questions. Um, and before I do go over the questions, just something to keep in mind as far as these strategies go. Um, I don't want you to feel discouraged if your child is not producing the words or signs right away while doing these strat strategies. Um, you know, children do um, develop at a different rate. Every child is different. Um, just because we're not doing what you want them to do right away, um, don't stop, you know, just to continue to try to do these strategies. And uh, before answering these questions, I want to, you know, part of this by saying that I know I'll try my best to answer all of your questions. Um, I can't, of course, diagnose um, or specifically tell you if I think that your child has a speech and language delay. Um, if you truly do have concerns and you feel like your child does um, seem not seem to be where they are speech wise, and of course, um, definitely seek um, a speech and language evaluation. And typically for children under the age of three, um, all states usually have an early intervention program um, that is actually free if they qualify for speech um, and other um, services. So I just wanted to let you guys know that before I answer the question. All right, so let me answer um, the first question I have. Okay, so Nia, <clears throat> Your question was, um, at what point should um, a parent be concerned if a child is not doing more than babbling? Um, so typically, um, I figured I would just go over the development of sounds and babbling. So usually around birth to three months is when um, children, uh, the baby starts to coo. And then around four to six months is when cooing is still there and then babbling starts the, to develop. And then seven months and up, is when babbling um, becomes longer strings like ba 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 na 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 da 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 da, um, and then around one year old is when the child starts to produce their first word. Um, so as far as um, when should a parent be concerned um, that their child is not doing more than babbling? Um, so usually by eighteen months old, a child has at least ten words. Um, and at 24 months old, a child is starting to combine words and has at least 50 words. So if you feel like um, your child is not is below these milestones that I mentioned, then I would um, seek a speech and language evaluation. Just because they, you know, 18 months old, they should have at least 10 words. 24 months old is when they start combining words and should have at least 50 words. Um, <clears throat> so as I said, if your child is not yet in that area, I'm not sure how old your, how old your child is, Nia, then I would um, definitely seek um, a speech and language evaluation. Okay, so my next question is um, Julie. Uh, so Julie's question um, or says that your son is two years old and he knows what the word means, but you can't fully say them. So for example, water, he says ah uh, for agua. Um, is it normal for him to be like this at this age? He also was a late talker. He walk, He was also a late walker. He walked at 15 months old. So as far as a walking and talking, um, there is research still developing about if a child um, does walk late, does that mean they will talk late? Um, so there isn't any actual true information or correlation yet whether if your child walks late, that means they'll talk late. Um, there are actually, there is, it's still developing. Um, it has been seen in some kids, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they will talk late if they walk late. Um, and then as far as um, producing the words, so oftentimes children will say part of a word. So like your son was saying agua, he's saying ah for agua. That is common for a child to say part of the word. Um, usually two syllable words tend to be a little bit difficult. Uh, one thing that you can do with your child um, 
for those two syllables, a strategy that you can do with them is clapping. So if you really want them to say the two syllable word, you can go agua or agua. So really, um, really slowing it down and uh, focusing on the syllables. But I wouldn't worry too much about um, him not completely saying those two words yet. I mean, he is only two years old. Um, so at this age, it's still um, appropriate. There are certain processes that children do um, produce at um, this age where um, these processes are not yet mastered until after three. So I wouldn't worry about that um, yet. But if you wanted to, you can do that clapping strategy that I just talked about. Okay, and then let's see. My next question that I have here, um, Bridget, um, is it true that exposing a child to multiple languages ca causes or will cause a delay in speaking? So that's a very common myth. Um, and it actually does not cause a speech delay. Multiple language does not cause a speech delay. Um, it's actually very beneficial to um, have a child that produces um, more than one language at a time. Um, you know, your child is able to have um, better problem solving skills if they're multilingual. Um, they're be better with um, multitasking. Um, they're able to communicate with other people that also speak that language, which is um, great. Um, and so with that said, I wouldn't, um, it, I wouldn't worry that you're, uh, if you're speaking multiple language with your child because it does not cause a speech delay. And I do have more information about that on my Instagram um, and Facebook. And at the end, I will um, include a link because I do have some posts about bilingualism. All right, and then the next question, which is very similar to what I just answered now, it's by Ray. Um, her question is, I know kids grow and develop at their own pace, but at what point should a parent seek early intervention? We are a multilingual family. My daughter, my daughter is 13 months and can only say a few words, no sentences, and some baby sign language. Um, so with that said, as I said earlier, um, I wouldn't worry that, you know, you're a multilingual family. Um, so definitely speak whatever language or languages you're comfortable with. Um, and 13 months is still um, pretty young. Um, that is great that she already has a few words, um, that she's already doing sign language. Sign language does actually count as words, too. So you can include that in your word count just to, you know, give you an idea that sign language does count as a word. Um, so I wouldn't worry about your 13-month-old based on what you're telling me being delayed just because it seems like she already has um, a few words. Usually by 15 months old, children produce around three to five words um, by that age. So she's already 13 months and already has a few words. So I wouldn't be um, worried about that right now. Um, definitely just you know, monitor her progress if you are worried. Um, if you feel like she is not increasing her vocabulary in, within the next few months, if you feel like she's plateaued and just hasn't doesn't combine any words by two years old, then um, I would seek an evaluation. But at this moment, I, I don't see, from what you're telling me, I don't see um, any concern. And then similar to the multilingual question, um, this is by Samantha. What is the best way to teach two different languages? I speak English and my husband only speaks Spanish. Should we introduce both languages at the same time or one and then the other? Um, so you can actually speak like I, you know, I just said, you can speak in whatever languages you're most comfortable with. Um, and you can introduce them both at the same time. Don't feel like um, you can only speak one language, and then once they learn that language, then they can learn the second language. So you can actually um, speak both languages at the same time. You know, your child will learn both when you speak to them in both languages. And if you are worried that a child would will get, you know, get a speech delay because you are speaking two languages, that's, you know, that won't happen. Um, typically, if a child is delayed, they are delayed in both languages, it's not just one. So um, that's just something to keep in mind. So just speak to your child in whatever language you're both comfortable with and you can do them at the same time. All right. Okay, so my next question um, by Jasmine. At what point is it recommended to get your child in speech therapy? I noticed my son two and a half swaps his SM for FR. So for example, smoothie, he will say fruity. Um, or small, he will say fall. 
So this is actually uh, another common, um, as we call, as um, SOPs call it, a phenological process um, that kids do tend to do. Um, one thing to keep in mind, the S sound does not come until a later age, around four years old. Um, so I wouldn't worry about him um, substituting these sounds at the moment. The sounds that, um, you know, a two and a half year old should uh, be able to say more for this age would be like the M sound, the B, the W, the P, the N, the H, the T, the D. So I wouldn't be worried if they're not able to produce um, those S words yet because that does come um, at a much later age. <clears throat> So as far as um, seeking speech therapy, um, just for those substitutions, I wouldn't worry about it. Um, it would be more of a concern if he had other processes um, that you know, made it really, really difficult to understand what he's saying. So if that's the case, if you feel like you barely understand what your child is saying, um, then I would go seek a speech and, speech and language evaluation. Um, if you feel like you understand your child only 30, 40 percent of the time, then um, I would try to um, seek a speaking language evaluation for that. All right, and then my next question here is, let's see, Catherine, where is Catherine's message? Okay, so Catherine, I see that you're saying, uh, my son is quite talkative, but he doesn't say goodbye or hello, which is, what I am trying to get him to say. Well, so that's great that he is um, very talkative. I'm not sure how old did you say your son is? Um, okay, you said your son is 15 months old. So yeah, that's great that he's talkative. So one thing that you can help your child with for um, high and by is just to practice it throughout the day. So that could be with people, of course, and that can also be with toys. Um, and you can help him with his hand. So just pretend, you know, this is your baby. Um, so let's say you want your baby to say hi or bye. Let's say you're doing a Zoom chat with, you know, a friend or family. You can say, okay, bye. So you can grab his hand and help him and then wave hi or bye. Um, and you can even do that with toys. So one thing I like to do um, when you're cleaning up. So I have a lot of my toys in um, containers just because it gives more opportunities to communicate. Um, so when you're when I'm usually cleaning up with my clients, rather than just putting the toys away, we'll do it together and we'll say bye, bye car, bye rocket. So just continue to do this throughout the day, whether it's with toys, you know, with people. You can even do it with food. Um, so you can just say a hi or bye, and hi would be of course when you're about to play with something or um, starting something. So that's something that you can do throughout the day to practice the high and the by. <clears throat> All right, let me just take a look at these other comments over here. Okay, so Morgan, I see <clears throat> you say your 19 month old says mama and daddy or babbles. He gestures a lot, but if we try to get him to use words for what he wants, he just gets angry and cries. How can we get past this? <clears throat> so that's actually a very common um, concern I've had with parents is that oftentimes, you know, <clears throat> their child would rather gesture, they would rather um, cry, throw things to communicate. <clears throat> so oftentimes children do cry um, or get angry just because it's frustrating for them to communicate and that's easier for them to do versus using their words. Um, so as far as the crying and when he's angry, um, one thing that I found helpful is to acknowledge um, how your child is feeling. So let's say maybe, you know, you're putting toys away, then your child starts crying. So rather than saying, oh, it's okay, you're fine. I always like to acknowledge like, oh, I know you're mad. You're sad because you're putting the toys away. So, you know, giving, validating their emotion is very helpful um, just to help with those emotions and giving them the vocabulary for what they're feeling. Um, so that's one, way, one thing that you can do uh, when he is gesturing, um, label what he's gesturing. So maybe he's pointing to, you know, he's pointing to his car instead of, just letting him gesture. You can say, oh, car, Bob. So continue to model what, he, what it is that he's gesturing. Um, you can also try doing sign language with him um, since he, right now you said he says mom and dad and bubbles. Okay, yeah, so do sign language with him. That's gonna help him 
to communicate um, his wants and needs <clears throat> um, and ease his frustration and your frustration. So you, um, one of the few sign languages I like to work on would be um, help, um, more, um, open, all done. So I would try to do those um, types of sign languages with him. And because it is still new, uh, when you're first starting off the sign language, you can do hand over hand and help them like more open um, just a shaman to help him ease his um, frustration. <clears throat> okay, so I have another a few other questions here. Okay, so I have a question from let's see, Amanda. Okay, so Amanda, so your question, are you telling me, so my daughter says a lot of words, but not many sentences. She also doesn't like it when I try to teach her or read to her. She has had little interaction with children her age. She will be three in February. What else can I do to help with her speech? So a few things that you can do to help her with her speech are the speech strategies that I mentioned. So those were to model the word, um, to model the word, to give choices to help her communicate, um, sabotage, so not giving her all of the items she may need, um, and pausing and waiting. So those are the, some strategies, um, which I mentioned in detail earlier, that you can do with your child. Um, and, as well, and as far as her saying a lot of words but not many sentences, um, so you can expand on her words. So it's great that she does have a lot of words you can expand, which is something I mentioned earlier. So let's say all your child says is carrot. You can say eat carrot, um, or your child just wants to say cut. Then you can say cut broccoli. So adding a word to the words that she already has will be helpful in um, expanding her phrases or sentences. Um, and then as far as reading, uh, one thing that I always tell families is you don't have to read everything in the book. So I rarely, really read all the words in my book. I kind of just talk about the pictures of the book. So instead of saying, I wrote to the zoo to send me, instead of saying the sentence, you can say, knock, knock, open. Ooh, it's an elephant. So making it really fun, making it animated, um, making the book come alive. So instead of just talking about the pictures, you can add sounds, um, gestures, um, something that I like to do when I see flowers in a book, pretend to smell the flowers as if they're real flowers. When you see food in the book, pretend to eat the pretend to eat the food in the book. So making it lively would be um, more engaging to help her or to make her want um, to read. Okay, so those are the things you can do with her. Let me just take a look at the other questions I have here. All right, so, I'm oh, sorry, Amanda, I didn't mean to skip you there. I had a list of all the questions I had, and for some reason that was after my other questions. Okay, so my next question I have here is... Okay, so by Kiriaki, I'm sorry if I mispronounce it. So, your interest, um, so your son is two and a half. When COVID hit, it seemed like he was on the verge of talking. He was at daycare half days for two months and finally really coming into his own, babbling and communicating more. When we took him out of daycare, he totally regressed. He is now two and a half. And finally back to where he was in March, trying different sounds, experimenting with his mouth and tongue, touching tongue and doing other sounds etc what else can i do to encourage him he tries to say things and then he gets so frustrated oh uh, yeah that must be difficult especially uh, when he is trying to say things but gets very frustrated um so one thing that you can do more with him um, in addition to the sounds that you're already um trying to do with him um is um putting the object near your mouth so let's say you want your child to say hat instead of saying oh can you say hat so model it model it indirectly hat that way they're seeing your mouth how you're saying it and since you're not asking him to say the word you're doing it indirectly by just saying hat that will make him more likely um to say the to imitate the word and of course just doing so um you know different sounds throughout the day when something falls you can go you can say things like uh oh or oh no 
when something's exciting, you can go, yay! Um, so really adding a lot of animated um, sounds will make it more fun. Um, make it less quizzy. So try not to ask questions, but instead model for him um, the words that you want him to um, try to um, imitate. Okay. All right. So I have a few other ones here. Okay. So Andrea. Okay, so Andra here says, would love to attend, but a little in ESO. So here's my burning question. Can you give us some key ages with specific milestones that if missed should be caused to follow up with our pediatrician? Examples would be an 18 month old should have, um, you know, however many words. So yes, I can definitely go over that with you. And I briefly, I think, went over um, the number of words that children should have. So usually there's, so when it comes to the number of words a child should have. So there's um, milestone and there's averages. So typically at 12 months old, the milestone is um, one word. Um, and average, which is uh, about 50% of children on average at 12 months old, say about five words at 12, at 12 months old. At 18 months old, the milestone, which is what 90% of the children say, um, at 18 months old, children have 10 words. Whereas, um, on average, what 50% of children are saying at 18 months old is 50 words. Um, and at 24 months old, a milestone is 50 words. And on average, again, our average is what 50% of the child is saying, 50% of children are saying the average for 24 months old is around 300 words. Um, and then at 36 months old, the milestone is 250 words. And the average for three years old is about a thousand words. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, at two years old is when they start combining words um, together. So combining two word phrases would be like, hi, mama, bye, mama, brown ball. So those would be examples of two word phrases. Um, and then so around three years old is when children start to produce three word phrases. And around four years old is when children start to produce four word phrases. Um, so you, so you're asking at what age should you worry if a child is not making sentences? So typically, let's say you have a three year old um, and they're not combining any sentences yet, um, then that would be um, something where you should probably seek a speech and language evaluation since they're not putting words together yet. Um, two years old, as I mentioned, is usually when children start producing two word phrases. Um, if your two-year-old child is below the milestone of 50 words, if they're producing less than 50 words, um, then I would definitely seek a speech and language evaluation if at two they have less than 50 words. Okay, let me just make sure. Okay, and then I have, oh, and Christina, so your question, or your question is, my son is very verbal at two and a half and bright and says many phrases. He knows his ABCs and numbers, but he cannot produce the letters S or F. For sleeping, he says leaping. For mouse, he says mount. And for woof woof, he says woot. Is this normal? And when will he be able to make these sounds? I'm um, sure. So that's another common phonological process that a lot of children actually um, tend to do. And these Processes don't normally um, aren't normally mastered until around four to five years old. So I wouldn't be worried that. So I wouldn't worry that he is saying leaping for sleeping or mouth for mouth, um, since those aren't normally mastered um, until a later age. And also, as mentioned earlier, the S sound doesn't come um, until around four years old. Um, the F sound should be produced around two to three years of age. Um, so one thing that you can do for the F. Um, is uh, a cue that you can do is you can have them look at your mouth and look on the spider lip like this. So you're showing him how to do, produce the F sound. Um, so that's one way you can teach him um, as far as producing the F sound. Um, but if he's only, if he's not producing the F sound when it comes to all when it comes to, um, you know, like when you were saying woof woof, he says woots woots, that is technically still age appropriate. But if he's producing, if he can't produce the F at all, um, then you can try showing him that cue go. Um, since that around two to three is when um, Fs come in. So if he's not able to do it right at this moment, that's fine since he's still two and a half. Um, so I wouldn't be too worried about that at the moment.
Okay, let me just see if I got through all the pre-submitted questions. Okay, did that. All right, so let me see my comments here. I can take a few more questions. Um, if there are any more that I've missed. Okay, so Eduardo, I see that you're saying my son is 20 months old and he says about five words and water, mom, dad, hi, no, very rarely. But repeat sounds like ja very often that make me think maybe it's a word to him. What can I do to encourage him to try to babble more often? He's a very quiet kid. Okay, yeah, so sometimes kids will tend to um, do a particular word that's not a word. Um, if it's something that he does consistently, it could be, um, it could be, he could be using that for something specific. Or sometimes kids often do sounds that actually don't mean anything, but it's just easier for them to produce that sound versus a word. So I've had a kid that would go da, da, da for everything, um, just because that's a sound that they're able to do. Uh, but as far as your question goes, one, um, few ways that you can encourage him to babble more are very similar to the strategies that um, I had mentioned. So modeling the words that you're modeling words that you know your child is seeing, making um, producing different sounds while you're playing with him. So doing the car sounds beep beep, um, doing all the animal sounds while you're playing, um, you know, making silly sounds. So you can do things like uh oh or oh no or boom, maybe something went cross you can go boom. Um, another fun sound that children like to do, and I've done with my clients, is like, achoo. So one thing, so for example, maybe you have a hat, and you want to see if your child will um, imitate the sound. You can go, achoo, and that makes it fun because, well, one, it's a silly sound, and, and it looks funny. So that could be um, another thing that you could do to try to help them babble more. Um, so really just modeling sounds and modeling words while playing with him would um, be more, would be encouraging, and to decrease the questions. So modeling versus asking questions. So like I said early on, um, asking questions can um, have pressure for kids. So when you decrease the questions um, and not ask questions throughout the day, so not asking questions like, what is it? What color? What is it? What do you see? What are you doing? It helps to just model like, oh, hat, broccoli, carrot, mm, yum. So doing things like that would be very helpful to try to encourage the babbling. Okay, Lee, let me just make sure I didn't miss any questions from earlier. All right, well, I think that is my last question for the day. Um, so just briefly, just going over the strategies um, one more time. Um, so model the word and phrase um, with your child. Choices, provide two choices um, to help your child um, tell you what it is that he or she wants. Um, sabotage, so, you know, forgetting to give them something that they may need. That way they can ask for it. And then lastly, pause, um, wait, um, get or pause and wait before um, responding to your child because that's very helpful. Oh, I see, Catherine, you have one more. I can do one more. Uh, before I go. And then for all the following questions, I know this will be replayed later on. Um, so in the future, um, so during the replay, feel free to comment and then I'll go back and um, answer those questions. So how do you get them to count at least from one to five? Um, so counting from one to five, um, so at a young age, at 15 months old, I wouldn't focus too much on counting on numbers. We want to focus more on functional language. Um, but if you do want to teach them, you can do that with um, objects instead of just counting. Or you can even do it while walking. So maybe you're walking up some steps. You can count the steps. Um, maybe you're playing with cars. You can count out each car. One, two, and do it as you're um, holding the object. So that's one thing that you can do. Okay, and then this will be the last question. I know I, I really I really wish I can answer all your questions now, but again, don't worry. Um, this will be replayed again, um, and I will go back and answer the comments there. But last question here. So Bree says you have triplets. Um, they will be two on the 22nd, adjusted 22 months age. 
my identical, my identical have twin to twin, and my boy has no words anyways. My boy is in speech, but no improvement so far. So, okay, so right now you're you're saying your 22-month um, bo old boy has no words. So it's great that he is in speech. Uh, so, okay, my I, twins, my girls randomly say some words, but they have less than 10. Um, and they're 22 months old. So, okay, so I would definitely, um, so I see that your boy is already in speech, so that's great. Um, I think I would also suggests um, a speech and language evaluation too for your girls if they're not, if they have less than 10 words at 22 months. Um, but as far as advice goes, I mean, for your, since you are already getting speech um, therapy for your child, I would definitely follow um, the strategies that the SLP has already suggested. It really helps to um, practice the strategies daily uh, with your child. So, and you can do the strategies just like what I mentioned already. So modeling the word choices, um, sabotaging, doing sign language is helpful since they don't have any words yet. Um, you know, adding sounds throughout the day, making it fun, um, labeling words, um, and then pausing and waiting. So I would um, try to do those with your children. And then, of course, um, since your girls aren't have less than 10 words, I would uh, recommend a speech um, and language evaluation for them, too. All right, so that is my last question of the night. I wish I can answer more questions. Um, but yes, thank you. I appreciate you putting my Instagram. So you can follow my Instagram. It's gracefulexpression.slop on Instagram. Um, and then my Facebook, I can also include that on here. I do have a Facebook page. It's um, Graceful Expression as well. I'll, I'll include that in the comments. Um, and yeah, so as I said, this will be replayed um, also. So I will be able to check in the comments and um, answer there. But thank you all for joining me. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, it's so nice to uh, be able to answer the questions as much as possible. I hope it was helpful. Um, and yeah, and if you have any um if you'd like to see other activities or ideas, um, make sure to check out my Instagram. I do post a lot of different activities you can do with your little one, um, as well as um, different um, information. And then also before I forget, um, there will be a promotion um, on Instagram next week that I'll be doing with Baby First. Um, so stay tuned for that. And yeah, I hope you guys have a great rest of the evening. And um, thank you again and have a great rest of your Tuesday. Bye.